my name is Chance and I'm here at SuperDroid Robots located in North Carolina. In this video I'll be covering the operating procedures and features of the LT2F with ARM, aka Bulldog. The Bulldog is a great piece of tactical equipment for increasing the distance between you and possible harm. Not only does it have all the features of the Bloodhound, but it has the added advantage of the 6-axis robotic arm. This increased capability allows it to go beyond tackling tough terrain and surveillance tasks to remotely manipulating objects. For example, it can open up doors, pick up and place explosives, and inspect suspicious packages. Here are some of the features of the Bulldog. Aggressive tread for tackling tough terrain and obstacles, flipper arms for stabilization, a front IR tilt camera, with 30 times optical zoom and LED lighting, two-way audio communications, a rear backup camera, a rear high-mounted crash-resistant drive camera with 30 times optical zoom, LED lighting, as well as a laser pointer, a low-profile weatherproof chassis, a six-axis robotic arm for remote manipulation of objects, an arm camera for seeing the task at hand, a digital radio system, for line of sight ranges up to a half mile. The Bulldog is the perfect balance between size, speed, and versatility. It weighs about 85 pounds and at the base is about 30 inches long, and with the arm fully collapsed in the park position, it's only about 18 inches tall. So in case you're in a hurry, you can detach the arm from the base, as well as the drive camera. When you're ready to start a mission, turn on the robot first by pressing the power button located next to the drive camera. Give it a second to wake up and become ready to receive signals. And then power on the remote. Once you hear the beep in the remote, go ahead and power on the tablet, top left corner. And once the tablet's open, open the program. Once the program's opened, the 6-axis also comes with a kinematic display for the position of the robot's arm and flipper arms. You can adjust the size of the display and rotate it for both the side view and top view of the robot. You have your battery life levels, your signal and connection display. At the top of the screen you have video quality in case you need to extend the range of your robot you can lower the quality or if you really need to see what's going on you can increase it. The robot speed, high and low, is gray. You can home the pan tilt zoom camera if at any point you get lost. Simply press the home button and it will zoom back to the front and forward position. You can park or stabilize the flipper arms. Pressing park puts it in the closed position so you can drive around uninterfered. Stabilize is used for tap tackling steep inclines. Quad mode displays all four cameras which would be the nose camera, the arm camera, the drive camera, and the rear camera. You can also select a specific camera with one of the top four buttons on the right. And if you're outside or inside, you can increase or decrease brightness of the screen. If you'd like to record video or snap a photo, simply tap on the corresponding button. Then you'll be prompted with a video has started or snapshot has been taken. Press OK, and when you're ready to end the recording, tap on the record button again and press OK once more. If you want to hear what's going on from the robot's perspective, tap on the speaker. And when you're done listening, tap the speaker button once more. If you need to communicate through the robot from the remote, press and hold the microphone button. And when you're done talking, release. When operating the joysticks, everything is very intuitive and self-explanatory. For example, driving forward and back is labeled forward and back and turning left and right. And at the top left of the control, the tilt function for the nose camera and the flipper arms are located on the same joystick. The drive camera is in the center of the control. You can tilt and pan up to 360 degrees. This camera has a 30 times op optical zoom as well as focusing on each level as well. Operating the arm is also self-explanatory. The shoulder and the base are located on the right side of the joystick, just above the power button. Up raises the shoulder up and down. 
and the base rotates left is left and right is right. In order after the base and shoulder, you have your elbow and wrist bend, as well as the wrist twist. If at any point in time you run into complications operating the robot, there's a robot reset button so that you can remotely reset the robot. Just press it and wait for the beep. When your mission is over, make sure the arm and flipper arms are both parked before turning off the robot. And start with the tablet. Exit the program. It's going to ask you if you want to shut down the tablet as well. Press yes. Once the tablet starts shutting down, it's okay to power off the controller. And don't forget to press the power button on the robot last. When you're ready to detach the arm of the robot, remove these four bolts from the corners of the base of the robot. You can do this by hand with a 3 16 Allen wrench. Once you've done that, twist the base of the circle connector for the arm wires, unplug it, and lift the robot arm off of the base of the robot. For disconnecting the drive camera, undo the screws to the cable connector unplug the cable connector, make sure to get a good grip of the arm camera and undo the screws at the base of the plate. Once you do that, everything's disconnected. You can set it down on the trunk of the car and be ready to go. Now that we've seen what it can do, let's put it back together and take it outside. Next mission, you need to charge your robot. Open up the charger, extend the cables, and plug the main cable onto the wall. Before you attach the cables to the robot, you'll see that the chargers all light up green. That means they're ready to charge. Take each corresponding cable and plug it into the equipment. 
And as you do, you'll notice that the corresponding charger, the light will turn red. Now with these circle connectors for the robot, make sure all the teeth are lined up. Plug it in and twist. Once it's fully twisted on, it's seated, everything's charging. Once it's done charging, all the lights will go green. Then you just dis disconnect the cables, wrap everything up, put it into the box. And thanks for watching.